Fellow presenters, good morning. I'm so glad that uh, I'm here to present before you. I also want to appreciate all the robots. I know how much pressure you are under at this time. It's good to see you on both folks of joy. Uh, it seems like we are in another round of the same struggle. Some pressure so. is coming from here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunities. Um, and I also appreciate my good friend, uh, Pastor Male. He's very passionate. He's also a fellow fighter. Yeah, but also in, I think in terms of diversity, there are areas that I will share where I agree with him and some areas that I see differently from him. I actually think we do need this law. We actually need more laws uh, than what we do have existing on our books. Um, they are insufficient. Um, in, the, in the first discussion about this law, uh, this subject, which I have been involved in from three areas. Number one, being uh, uh, an HIV AIDS prevention specialist, starting in 1988, I've been involved for 30 years now in HIV AIDS work. I have written policies for Uganda AIDS Commission. I've worked with young people across the country. Uh, partnered with many others, both nationally and internationally. And my approach to this issue of uh, homosexuality, LGBT, started from a policy conflict between us as Africans in our ABC, abstinence, being faithful, and minors of condom, vis-a-vis -vis the European ways of seeing things. For them, HIV AIDS was gay rights, more gay rights, and more gay rights, more condoms, ARVs, and more pharmaceuticals. So in the discussion that ensued over the last 30 years, I've had a chance to sit down and debate with many of the leading LGBTQ authorities, studied their documents, as well as debated them. So I do not write, well, well, I did wake up one day and say, I'm going to fight or resist homosexuality. It actually found me in my work as an HIV AIDS specialist. My bachelor's is in social science, sociology, that is preparing people to take the roles that they should have. My master's is a master's of science in counseling and psychology, that is helping people to live well, to, to live normal, healthy lives. My college, that's in Philadelphia, also gave me a PhD and honorary for the work that I've done in HIV AIDS and other words that I've received as a leading clergy in the work of HIV AIDS. Parliament awarded me the most celebrated worker in HIV AIDS, handed to me by the president and the speaker, that's a few years ago, some you may forget. I share that to start the memory, because usually when pastors and clergy come up, they think of us as uneducated, uninformed about public health, uninformed about psychology and the law, but I'm glad that you do have someone who's well experienced in this subject. Secondly, I've also been counseling young people for now almost 30 years. Both those who have been involved in HIV AIDS work, uh, coming, coming out of homosexuality, those who have been victims, some cases we've succeeded, some cases we've had, we've had our fingers burnt, because fighting this issue is very, very difficult. Uh, and then finally, uh, then we've also suffered greatly out of that. Uh, the last time we did this law, I was sued at the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. I was sued in American federal court. I was bankrupted financially, devastated. And part of the reason I'm going to make a suggestion is from my experience. Because when I was sued in court of law, courts of law, Europeans and Americans, I tried to knock on every door to find help. I went to the uh, Minister of Ethics and Integrity, Father Lokodo, could not help me because there was no law. There's no portfolio of the state. This is completely new. How do we deal with it? Is it parliament? I wrote to the Speaker of Parliament several times about my plight. I was never helped. I wrote to His Excellency the President. I wrote to the First Lady. I wrote to everybody. I was never helped. And so there is many people who are suffering today. <clears throat> Patriotic, heroic people who are of goodwill, who have suffered much because of this issue and because the existing laws in place are on doors, but uh, homosexuality travels on Windows 11. Because the existing laws are typewriter technology, but homosexuality travels in digital. 
we are finding ourselves in a huge lacuna where good people are suffering, like uh, Father, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pastor Male, myself, uh, Bishop Chigana, and many <coughs> others. So in doing this, I've written a book on this very same subject called Africa's Resistance to Homosexuality. It's over here. It's a 450-page book that actually goes to the very bottom. Where did this thing start from? Where has it come? And why are we here? It's full of annotated notes. I wrote myself as a professor of law because I was benchmarking with Professor Sylvia Tamale, who is a major promoter of homosexualism as, as an ideology. So I wanted to make sure that we do have well-documented source why this is where it is. And I want to analyze two words as I go forward. Homosexuality, that is same-sex behavior. Homosexualism, the advancement of the ideology of homosexualism. Those are very, very critical. Because if you only address the act, then you are simply putting yourself as an ambulance. But if you prevent the ideology, that's at the top of the hill, then you are stopping people falling in. Some of the areas of homosexualism is gender identity ideology, feminism. Because gender identity now has come up of age, they have 71 genders. Madam Chairperson, I want you to know, many of us have not studied, we hear gender, we assume that we are talking about two what? Genders. We know male and female. That's what most of us know. But by and large, if you apply on any organization, university, high school or in international say they will ask you, what are you? He, she, z, we, v, I mean things that we cut man in woman, woman in man, animal spirit, by spirit. So for us to say that we are going to find victims of homosexuality as the only way, without addressing the ideology, we are absolutely not doing our country and our people a good service. So I, I, I would like, as I share this, to identify one, they are homosexual. Those people practice same-sex acts. Then they are homosexualists. Those who advance the ideology of homosexuality. For example, my friend Fox O'Doy, some of his comments have been homosexualistic in ideology, but not in, not in act. So I want people to settle down. Not because usually when we talk about this issue, you're like, how do you know, how do you know? But I've debated you. You know that very well. So please feel at home. For me, even when you tease me, I'm okay. In fact, let me take off my jacket so that we can have a very good one. Like Honorable Katun. Thank you very much. So some of the things that we need to do in dealing with this issue. Number one, to me, the first area that I would like to appeal this committee and this parliament to do is let's major in the major. Homosexuality is an infection on the life of, of the family. Marriage, family life, sex, it's an infection. So now we are coming to deal with an infection. But we do not have a law in place that is building marriage and family life in Uganda. And one of the things I'd like to ask is that we should have a cabinet minister, a full cabinet minister of marriage and family in Uganda, whose purpose is to build, to help the welfare of people entering into marriage and family life, enjoying harmonious family, so that when there is a crisis somewhere, like we have land crisis, we know Minister of Land goes. When we have a problem in Karamoja, we know the Minister of Karamoja is there. When we have a problem in the elderly, we know the Minister, but we do not have someone to go. When I was dealing with this issue, Ngaban Twara, I didn't know who to go to. So even when you make this law, where are you going to sit it? Who is going to be able to supervise it? I was involved in the anti-pornography law and the committee. We did the committee, I was put as a member of the committee, which is part of fighting this issue. But uh, when we ended up in the Ministry of Ethics and Integrity, where I was a committee member, it ended up that we were about eating money. It was, a, it was bureaucratic money-eating exercise, which I refused, and I wrote to the IGG. I said what we are doing is not helpful, and up to today, the, the, the anti-pornography committee is a non-starter. Non-starter. That's why you see pornography all over the place. We need a Ministry of Marriage and Family where all these laws that have to do with family can be supervised and enforced. 
So that's number one. I would, to me, if I can convince you, the others will fall. Because the, the, the strongest way in a society fights homosexualism, sexual deviance, is by promoting a normal well-being of the family. If we could invest 80% energy in how to help mar why are marriages going through divorce? Why are people not getting married? Why are people, this is sodomy in marriage. Why are men going behind instead of going forward? Okay, what, why? Can we know the information? We, do we have surveys? No one is doing that. So number one, I'd like to ask that this committee champions as a major setting up a law that establishes a cabinet ministry of marriage and family. That will go a long way. Otherwise, we don't have anyone who is competent. And that person who does it should be married properly, at least for 30 years, and we know that they have children, and some of the people automatically are disqualified because of that. But you cannot get someone who doesn't know what we are talking about. So that's number one. Number two, we need to have addressed the issue of homosexualism, the ideology. Because when you put a barrier on top of the hill, people don't fall down. But when you, are doing, when you wait for people to fall under the hill and they become victims, you are only investing in abulences. <laughs> so, to me, I would like to request that we address the issue. For the last 25 years, Professor Sylvia Tamale has taught most of the law students that homosexuality is normal. That prostitutes are actually have more rights than married women. The first lecture she gave, most law schools walked out. Because she went and studied at University of Michigan, I have a full chapter on her. Because what I'm talking about, I have fully written about it here, 450 pages. She went to University of Michigan, studied sexology, then she came to University of uh, Harvard, had an answer, then she came to McKinley and declared a revolution, a radical feminism. Now, many of you don't know what radical feminism. Radical feminism is a theory of gender that teaches that apart from reproductive differences, men and women are basically the same. So for them, they, they see a man and a woman are, are just what? The same. But science says it's wrong. So continuously, homosexuality has, you cannot pass law at Makerere especially the cause of gender, if you don't support homosexuality. That means most of the lawyers, and I've written, that, that, I've written this, I've written this in my, I'm, I will, I will respond. Yes. Excuse, allow me to finish, no, you no, can no, no, correct. No, 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 I don't want to leave Yes, honorable attorney. Uh, first of all, it is not true. What is not true? That you cannot pass law. How do you know? Because I'm a student of law. No, the okay. course, have you done the course of gender and human rights? No, 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 no. Please, no, please. I want to be specific. Yeah. We can be vague. I'm a scholar on this subject. Maybe repeat what it was. I say you cannot pass the course of gender, sexuality, yes, and the law no. under, under the course. school of law. You wanted to mean exactly. I was very specific. So if you have never done that course, please, I ask you. I have the notes. Okay, I would like to ask you. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Please don't be disturbed by data. Okay, go ahead. You're yes. wasting your time. Thank you. Have, yeah. Yes, so we must address the issue of homosexualism. Secondly, in the area of HIV AIDS, I have, uh, in my research, I discovered that homosexuals gathered in South Africa on 7th of February 2004 20, 20, and made a map of how to take over Africa using. HIV, AIDS, and human rights as a guys. The Ugandan uh, representative was called Ronald Rwabai. He was the Ugandan representative. This conference mapped out in specific detail how to change, one, the, the society, eliminate fear in ourselves, educate people on LGBT, targeting of leaders and policy makers, and education and influence over the media, LGBT mobilized to come out. That is in society in law and human rights, advocacy and changes realizing the law to protect and recognize homosexuals as LGBT rights, human rights organization to lobby for human rights, including LGBT rights, religion and culture, to change the stance of people's beliefs that even homosexuals are children of God. This was carefully mapped out. 
We are dealing with a conspiracy. What is a conspiracy? A group of people sitting down, coming up with a work plan, and then activating it. I have, this is 2004 in Johannesburg. I have the original documents. What has happened is whenever I would talk to a homosexual who has come out, me I have been gathering records. <laughs> Honorable folks, I have been that for the last 25 years. Every time they arrest a homosexual, every time a homosexual becomes a Christian, Jojo Wundu, Po Kagawa, Elisha, for me, I am a scholar. So at my house, I have files and files and files on this subject from, from Johannesburg, from Nairobi, many others. And it makes me both a very valuable person, but also a dangerous person. Because my security is not actually guaranteed. Because for people, you don't think these are very key. But to know that so and so and so and so are part of a conspiracy, it makes you a dangerous person, which is why they have worked very hard to destroy me. I'd like to bring the third part on homosexualism in the area of media. This is where media houses are approached. I, I pointed at uh, media. Media houses are approached uh, and their, their editorial policy is guided. I'll give an example. The New Vision Media House, during the first discussion of the debate, they came up with a policy that we will not discuss about homosexuality except if it happens only in parliament and only in court. That means anytime a man rapes a boy, a woman molests a girl, that story is not covered. And so what does that mean? It means that the, the absence of sharing information by such a big media house like New Vision is denying mothers whose children have been molested a chance to have their story taken out. This is New Vision official policy. You can ask any person here. That is why even though we get the news, this is the sensational 10 o'clock news, Agatari Kung is full of funny stories. But the issue of homosexuality is never covered. What does that mean? It is an absolute blackout of relevant information which is necessary for a democratic governance. I will talk about the nation media. The nation media has a minority policy which is based out of Nairobi. I have this written, I also have a copy of the same. This policy, in essence, based out of Nairobi, recognizes homosexuality as a minority and works to promote as an editorial policy. It is give, given secrecy, but it gives also that some people who will be hired will be part of that minority. When you saw Craig Cardona, I think you are aware of Craig Cardona. We've had some people in the media recently. Craig Cardona was working for uh, the, the nation media, and then he left and went to South Africa a few years later. You remember him. Then what happened in South Africa? He married another man to the embarrassment of all of us, to the embarrassment. So I would like to ask that this law will address the issue, one, academic editorial policy, where people cannot actually pass a course because they are being indoctrinated. Secondly, media policy, where newspapers, uh, media organizations are dedicated to the agenda of showcasing homosexuality as a normal lifestyle. And then I think it will be proper to have rehabilitation when we talk about rehabilitation. Some of the students who have gone through school of law, who have studied this course, we must take them to Changkwans so that they get reoriented with the mindset change. So this is also part of my recommendation when I talk about what? Rehabilitation. People need, we need to deal with homosexuality as an act and homosexualism as an, as a, an ideology. Um, another, in terms of uh, the, the, the homosexualism propaganda, is Uganda Communications Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, some of you saw that the deputy speaker spoke about a policy that was in Kasese. Was it Kasese or Fort Porto? Kasese. Okay, and wondered why would they be putting a policy in an urban area, in a, the urban center of Uganda, because there has been a very careful underground movement to approach here on the agenda, it says, uh, speaking to education and influence over the media and policy makers. You've noticed one of our, uh, the other side is, uh, he received a few million dollars from Kennedy Foundation. His name is uh, Frank Mugisha, the head of sexual minorities Uganda. He received 
He received a few million dollars from Kennedy Foundation. I have that documented in my book. Because he claimed that David Kato, who was the head of sexual minorities in Uganda, was killed by homophobia. I want to be on record that David Kato's story is an example of how Uganda gets bulldozed and the justice system fails. The young man, his name is Sachs. What is this? What, Pastor Mali, what the, the young man who would kill David Cato? His name is Yeah, Mukon. Yeah, I forget his name. I will get it. He was a prisoner. De, uh, David Cato saw him in community work. He admired him. He, he went and paid bail for him and took him to his home and says, I will sodomize you. So, this was a sex slave. Then the man told Kato, I am tired of being sodomized. Kato locked the door. This is on court record. He locked the door and says, whether you like it or not, I'm going to continue. Then the boy went to the bathroom and got a hammer and came and killed David Kato. What do we call that in Rome? A person refusing to be raped. If that man was a woman, he would not be in jail. He would be a hero. Why? Resisting rape has never been a crime, even if you kill the person. But because Barack Obama called, but because Hillary Clinton called, but because Ban Ki-moon called, but because it be that case quickly was, was taken over, it became politicized, and I am convinced today that young man is in jail, not because he committed a crime of killing, he was defending himself from being sexually molested. Many cases have come out like that and they are covered up. There are many people crying. So I go back to the issue. We must, as, as you make this law, address the issue of homosexualism. UCC has a policy that says that we will be non, is it non-discrimination? Yes. It is just uh, Bishop Chigane is going to speak about this. That we do not discriminate uh, homosexualists and homosexual content. So we mean the licensing document. So that we should not discriminate people. Madam Chair, I need guidance. Do I? Let no, no, no. You just finish. Actually, okay. your time is up. Oh, okay. Very well. You mentioned it is in there. Okay. So I want to say that there is a policy at Uganda Communications Commission of non-discrimination. Now many of us do not know how homosexuality travels. It goes in four stages. It is important because many of you think that homosexualism is one stage. No, it's four stages. Stage number one is called non-discrimination where you remove the law. I'm sorry, decriminalization. You remove any law against homosexuality. And this is the work of all European and American governments to make sure there is no law. Remove the state. So this stage of removing laws against homosexuality takes a few years. The two, non-discrimination. That is a stage where you begin to integrate homosexuals as normal members of society. Transgenders, men who are dressing like women, they come and sit next to you. Number three, stage number three is equality. That is when they say, omwenkano, kano. You marry a woman, I marry a fellow what? A fellow man. That is stage number three. You hear a lot about equality. Stage number four is called gay pride, affirmative action, and hate crimes. What is that? They tell everybody to celebrate this lifestyle, and then they give them free scholarships. There are now free scholarships and funding for homosexuals, which are people being taken. And then lastly, hate crimes is if you speak anything negative about it, you have committed a very bad crime, and you must be locked up, you must be switched off the account. Real quick. So I would like to say we need to address the policies, because dealing with individuals is not good enough. We must make a law that addresses those policies that discriminate people. Um, we need a rehabilitation center. I will make this very quick. I pass for three minutes. We need a rehabilitation center where people who have been molested, those who are being taken in, can be uh, rehabilitated. Most schools these days talk, we have a zero policy. We have a zero tolerance policy, which is OK. Recently, at Budo, there was a case, a WhatsApp case, where there was a parent who was speaking about her son and a student. And, but what was clear, the school agreed and they, that there was a dorm captain who had confessed to be a homosexual. They dismissed him immediately. And other schools do the same. Where do those people go? 
Where do they go? They go to other schools. There was a boy in P4. A, a young kid came back home and told mommy, my friend who's in P5 tells me I'm his boy, I'm his girlfriend. What does that mean? P4. I wanted actually to show you a video of what is going on, the recruitment between older boys and young boys. So when the boy told that, ah, the, my, Baba Igiri is Okwana. So my point here is we need to have a rehabilitation center. Butabika Mental Health can be in, to, uh, told, Mulago Hospital, the medical school, the school of psychology can also be told that you need to come up both with a course and a program to rehabilitate this. If it's not put on the agenda, it will not happen. The jailing of prisoners. If you arrest a homosexual prisoner, why, did, for example, they see, they, they, if you know someone is a homosexual, what arrangements do you make in the, in, to protect the other prisoners? We have had a lot recent, there's a lot of homosexualism in prisoners. How do we protect the others? Otherwise, we will put a, a fox or a wolf inside the chicken's what? A fox. No, no pun intended here. No pun, no pun intended here. No pun intended here. Even if it is. But I'm here, man, so I need to be asked. Yeah. Pastor, you have only five minutes. Okay. Um, I think that. Uh, I, I would like to give one policy recommendation and then I want to give a forecast of what is going to happen as a result of this. So a policy recommendation that I'd like also to give is that the key spreaders of homosexualism, one, HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS programs were chosen, I have evidence that I will share with you, that these people who made this agenda decided that they should use two HIV AIDS and human rights as a, a subtle way of organizing. So uh, the key thinker of that is called Hans Binswanger. He was an employee of the World Bank. Uh, the organizer of the conference was called Keith Goddard. He's from Zimbabwe. Um, and they made a decision that it will, it will be subtle enough to confuse Africans that uh, do not say we are bringing LGBT, say we are, we are organizing for HIV and human rights. So, the three key areas where money is flowing, one is HIV AIDS. I am an HIV AIDS specialist, but you can fight HIV to promote gay rights, as Europeans have done, but you can fight HIV to promote behavior change. So we need to focus on that, but the battle is great. In 2004, I was hired by Uganda AIDS Commission to write a policy on abstinence and being faithful in marriage. Because it was contradictory that we have ABC, but we have a policy strategy for condoms, policy strategy for BCT, policy strategy mother to child, but we do not, even now, now, 20 years later, we still don't have a policy and strategy for abstinence and being faithful. Why? Because the diplomats, I sat with them in the chair, Diplomats, DFID, CDC, PEPFA, they did not like the idea of us writing a documented policy and strategy to strengthen being abstinence and being faithful in marriage. I wrote the document, we gave it to Chihumuro Apuri, uh, he, he, he spoke Rudicha, uh, 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 Pastor Seba, yes, we hired you, we, you, we, we signed contract, but we realized we made a mistake. We should not have done this. Maybe, uh, maybe Minister of Gender should have done this. That document was opposed by those people, and it is gathered dust, gathering dust somewhere. And young people in Uganda, whenever you see now HIV AIDS campaign, it's always about condoms, ARVs, stigma. When was the last time you saw a billboard on be faithful in marriage? What abstinence? No. Because there is an active, underhanded pressure by diplomats. Me, I dealt with it firsthand. I know the name. Ruben Del Prado was the UN AIDS ambassador. <coughs> I remember the other, other. I have written about them in my book. This is documented. And by the way, I, I have been asking for financial support to print at least 1,000 copies of this book. Because many of you are talking about something you don't know about. I'm telling you. You know something is wrong, you know, you see how these are moving, eh, the church, the, this, but you don't know that they actually have an agenda which is well crafted. And for, 
Most of our people, when they go overseas, they are discriminated. Where are you from? From Uganda. Oh, where you kill gays. You kill gays. Many of you, rightful, honorable people, are walking with an albatross of stigma that we are such bad, evil people. Yet we have been defending the family because of misinformation. So I'm asking this committee to take the right message that Pastor Semper needs help to publish at least 1,000 copies of people. Uh, that, those are the end of my policy recommendation, but a forecast. One, because I'm an expert on this subject, you are going to have what in war is called a false flag. A false flag is where these people are going to look for sympathy by organizing, harming one of them themselves so that they will weaponize victimology. My last chapter is victim, victimhood and the white savior complex. Homosexuals get visas, money, emergency funds by holding out as victims. You are going to receive, it's going to be a false flag. Security must be prepared for it. If you know, you are going to receive phone calls. That's number one. Number two, there's already in place an existing security defense system under JELOS. You know who's funding JELOS? I have talked to OCs who tell me that when a homosexual is brought to the, to the police station, even before me as the OC, I have known the file. I receive a phone call from State Department in, in Washington that is telling me about a person who I haven't even talked to. They have just registered at the front what? Because they have a very well organized digital system which is empowered by the uh, uh, Western world. Uh, Barack Obama passed the executive order in 2012 instructing all American government, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Commerce, uh, PIPFA, every area of U.S. government to have as number one the promotion of LGBT. So as you make this law, you are facing the wrath directly of the entire West. That's just America. You talk about Canada, Europe. But I commend you for your patriotism. Number two, you're going to receive harassing calls. Harassing calls and intimidation. You want to get visas. But is it in order? that even if we disagree with an European or another state, that they should blackmail us? The answer is no. So I encourage us that not only should we look to make a start, we should look build new allies. Qatar just organized the best World Cup. They wanted to put homosexualism in it, they refused it. They were saying, no, so take that nonsense out of there. And they organized the most beautiful cup. In fact, I should like this committee to go to Qatar to learn lessons of how to organize the beautiful game, the beautiful cup, and protect our families. And I think we may even get more funding from there because when they intimidate you on money, there are other countries that have even more money who can support us. I rest my case. Thank you very much.